Um, hi, everybody. I'm uh, happy to be here today. My name is Grant, and I'll be presenting on what I think is a very cool utility for many of you who do data science work or even any kind of code work. Uh, this is my first time attending, well, not attending, the first time participating in CSV comps. And it's my first presentation in quite some time, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, so with that, you should be able to see my slides relatively soon. Um, let me just get my speaker view up here. I'll take it from here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking today about using GitHub Actions to accelerate your data efforts. If you haven't heard of GitHub Actions before, don't worry, I will cover that. Um, and this is something that I'm doing kind of on a personal note, not really related to my job, but I see so few people making use of it uh, when it is, I think, an incredibly underrated tool. So I'm hoping that by sharing it with all of you today, maybe you'll have something new in your tool set. So before we get into that, just a little bit about me. Um, in case my uh, video in the corner is too small, here's a slightly larger photo of me, although a bit out of date, uh, in case you really wonder what I look like. To give you a little bit more info on uh, where and who I am, I am coming to you live from sunny San Diego, California, home territory of the Kumeyaay people. Um, I've been here for a few years now and I lived here Prior to that, so I'm a very, very familiar with this area and very comfortable here. Right now, I'm a research software engineer at the Anti-Defamation League, one of the uh, oldest civil rights organizations in the United States. Uh, and what, that's where I do a lot of data science and machine learning related work uh, related to social media and particularly online hate speech, especially how to uh, make, make there be less of it online. Um, but I'm not really giving a talk today about my work or my organization, so we won't be hearing about any of that terrible stuff. Um, I put together this talk together kind of on my own time, um, but I will, after this talk, be sharing a fellowship opportunity that some of you may be interested in over on my Twitter, so I encourage you to sort of uh, check that out later. Um, and if you want to be able to contact me, here are a few of my socials. Twitter is one of the easiest ways to reach me. You can find me on GitHub. Uh, I'm aware my email may be blocked over in the lower left-hand corner, but you're welcome to find me by email as well. Um, prior to joining the ABL, I was a PhD dropout. I was in a PhD program long enough to drop out of it at UC San Diego, where I was in the uh, doing a lot of engineering and neuroscience. Um, and then before that, I was a graduate in computer science, philosophy, and engineering, and my undergrad at UC Irvine because I was interested in too, far too many things. But uh, without further ado, uh, the first step to sort of understanding, uh, first step to understanding how you use GitHub Actions in any of your data or coding efforts is to understand what is a GitHub Action. Um, and so. Also, I apologize if you can hear the airplane noise in the background, it'll pass quickly. Um, so if you've ever been on GitHub, you've probably have seen this toolbar before. Um, and you may have noticed that it has a few options that you rarely click on. Uh, in particular, you may notice that there's this button that says actions that is probably less used than the issues and pull request buttons that you're much more used to. Um, in, this, in short, a GitHub action is simply when a specified event happens, GitHub will do computation for you. Um, now, that may sound a little bit strange because when most people think of GitHub, they think of storage and version control and using it to sort of maintain projects. Sometimes they go as far as using it for documentation and management. But about a year and a half ago, at the end of 2019, GitHub released these things they called actions uh, that take GitHub's capabilities quite a bit further. And I think they're very useful for the kind of things that um, many of you are already probably familiar with, but a bit more beyond that. So GitHub actions are meant to facilitate some of the more traditional elements of software development, like um, testing, automatically formatting code, continuous integration, deployment, all those sorts of usual things. But it's much more flexible than that. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about a little bit today. Um, for the moment, beyond that, one of the things that makes GitHub Actions very cool is that for private repositories, you get about 30 to 50 hours of free compute time per month, depending on which of the free tier options you're in. You'll get more if you're in 
paid options. Uh, and if you're using a public repository, you have sort of an unlimited amount of compute minutes per, per month, if I'm understanding uh, GitHub's documentation correctly. So if you have a public or open source project, you can basically make use of these utilities as much as you like without much restriction. Uh, and when you factor in the factor in the ability to sort of run any GitHub action for up to six hours at a time or more, if you play your cards right, they become a very powerful tool, especially if you have limited compute resources uh, elsewhere, or you don't have a very powerful computer, or you don't have a lot of time in one place with a computer at a given time. So GitHub Action to go sort of through the anatomy of it is, even though they're called GitHub Actions, the top level item behind them is actually called a workflow and a workflow will link several actions together. Um, so there are kind of six pieces to the anatomy of GitHub Actions that you need to understand. The first is, as I already mentioned, there are events and events can be chronological or asynchronous. They can be initiated by a user or an event online, um, which will trigger the action. And that triggers uh, the workflow, which will kick in um, as soon as the action is detected by uh, GitHub servers. Workflows are sequences of jobs. So a single workflow can handle multiple jobs, which as I mentioned before, may relate to testing, data collection, deployment, several other things. Uh, each job contains multiple steps towards completion. Each step is broken down into the uh, eponymous actions. This is kind of where the GitHub uh, magic comes into play. And I'll give, give a little bit of an explanation of what these actions are as we get towards that. And then finally, actions are executed by these servers on GitHub side called runners. Um, and so these six items, if you, if you know these six sort of vocabulary terms, you kind of have an overview, uh, a bird's eye view of what GitHub Actions are composed of. And so I'm going to give you a code example of what a GitHub Action actually looks like on, on a repository once you have it initiated. All GitHub Actions are maintained using YAML format. So it's relatively easy to, easy to read even if you haven't uh, used it before. And I'm going to go, go through it bit by bit. The first bit is that you have, an, like I said, you have an event on which the GitHub action uh, executes. In this case, this particular configuration is set to execute whenever there's a push to the repository that this is hosted on. The workflow uh, has is basically the entire file, but it has a name. Uh, in this case, I'm borrowing from the introduction to GitHub actions documentation over on the official GitHub website. The workflow is then broken down further into jobs. Uh, in this case, this, this workflow has only one job, which is to check a version number of some sort. Uh, and then the rest of it is broken down into steps where uh, the four steps involved here are checking out the repository's code, setting up uh, node.js on the runner, running the install for node, uh, running the install for the particular module that's hosted in this repository, and then finally running the code once uh, NPM has inst uh, installed it. So you can break it down into each step and you can see what the steps are by looking at the dash marks under the steps section of the YAML file. Um, and then finally, the actions in question here are particularly these two steps. So when you see these sort of actions slash some name, that is using a piece of code that is hosted on the GitHub Marketplace to perform an action for you. The other two steps below those two are actually just sort of running the code that is written in the YAML file. So you can choose between using things that other people have published, or you can just sort of write the raw code and have GitHub actions sort of execute the code that you put right in your file. And then finally, the runner is specified a little bit further towards the top. Uh, you have a choice of many operating systems, including various versions of Ubuntu, Mac OS, Windows, and there are probably a few others. But for my purposes, I nearly always use the Ubuntu uh, latest version. So that's why this file is uh, the one I'm going with. Um, 
And so what triggers a workflow, what actually is an event and what can you actually use this for? You have a lot of options. One is that you can schedule using timed events so you can run it every so often or on certain dates and so on. The syntax is very similar to cron jobs if you've used them before, C-R-O-N. Um, and so if you're familiar with that syntax, you'll be able to schedule a GitHub action job, no problem. Uh, you can also fire off manual events to trigger GitHub Actions, and that can be done through the user interface on GitHub itself. If you go through the Actions tab that I showed you before, there are, and you, and you specify that a certain workflow is using this workflow dispatch, dispatch manual event, you'll be able to just sort of hit a button and have code kind of execute on call, which is really cool. And then finally, basically, any GitHub event that you can think of can be used in, as an event to trigger a workflow. So that includes the pull request that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. You can, you can set it so that it's when a pull request is opened or signed or synchronized or reopened or any other event there. You can have GitHub events, GitHub actions run on push, you know, to any branch of your repository and you're, and you're allowed to select what what branches trigger the workflow and which ones do not. And then of course, you can also even have them trigger by issues being opened or edited or replied to or closed. So really any attribute of GitHub that you can name, you can use as a basis for triggering a GitHub action. And there are many others that you can look up as well. Um, so what actions are available? There is a GitHub marketplace uh, and as of this morning, there are nearly 8,300 actions available to you in the GitHub Actions Marketplace that you can freely use in any of your code. Um, so I encourage you to go look through. You probably you'll probably find an action associated for um, any piece of any piece of your tech stack uh, that is commonly used. Will probably have utilities in this marketplace. Um, so some very common actions though, which you'll see over and over again, are uh, this checkout action, uh, which is the one that gets your code from your repository onto the runner that's executing the action. And then you'll also probably wanna pay attention to these two actions, which is the upload artifact and download artifact item. Uh, and that will let you pass assets and data between different jobs so that you know, you can preserve some of the output of your computation and reuse it later if you want to. So that'll be very useful for some of your data, uh, data maintenance and data processing efforts. Um, and so by way of example, since we have a few minutes left, I wanted to go through a more full example of, of a GitHub workflow that I'm using for one of my projects or um, that, I'm, that I'm making use of in my spare time as well. And in this case, we're going to be testing a piece of Python code. Um, this is the full file. Don't worry, we'll go through it step by step. This is for a project that I affectionately refer to as the data kitchen because it has many different uh, culinary esque tools, I guess you could say, for like preparing and acquiring and processing data. Um, and so it's going to be named the kitchen testing suite. This is just sort of a moniker, it doesn't actually represent any piece of executed code. Uh, I want this piece of code to execute on both pushes and pull requests. For a pull request, I want it to execute on every pull request. But when it comes to pushes, I'm only going to have this executed whenever there's a new commit to the main branch. So people can commit new stuff to feature branches all they want, but it's only when they try to put it in the main branch that I'm going to be doubly sure that it's passing all the tests. So moving on to the jobs, there's only one job in this workflow, which is to run the test. And one of the things I'm gonna make use of here that I think is really cool is this thing called a strategy matrix. And what this is does is I'm specifying four operating systems and two versions of Python, because I don't just wanna make sure it works for whatever the latest Ubuntu is or whatever the latest Python is. I wanna have some sort of compatibility between versions because not everybody uses the same thing. And so by defining that here, I can make use of it later to actually run tests in various different environments. So now that I've defined a matrix of these items, um, are we coming up on time? Yeah, five minutes left. Okay, so I have a minute. Yeah, we'll be 
through in a couple seconds, or sorry, in a, in a minute or two. Um, so yeah, and then you can specify that this item will run on the operating system specified in that matrix by using the special syntax. That's a, a dollar sign double curly braces with matrix.os in the middle. And then moving on to the steps of this job, we use the checkout action I defined earlier that puts my code into the runner so I can now use it. I'm going to have it set up a version of Python based on whatever part of the matrix is in. In this case, I just invoked the matrix.python version so that it uh, invokes the GitHub action set up Python. So that runner will now have Python installed specifically the version of Python I specify. Then I'm going to use pip end in, in a raw command to sort of, uh, sorry, pip to install pip end because I use pip end to develop some of my environment, you know, some of my tool in a virtual environment. Pip end is very helpful for that. And then once that is installed, I can run the test by having pip end install all the items that are in the repository and then execute pi test. So that's a complete actual useful GitHub workflow that I use from time to time to make sure to make GitHub test any code that gets put into a repository. And you can do similar things to execute uh, data science related jobs. So that's just one example. And unfortunately, that's all we really have time for. Uh, here again is the full code. Uh, you'll be welcome to look at it after the presentation as well. If you want to learn more about GitHub Actions, I highly recommend looking at the GitHub Learning Labs. They have many great interactive tutorials for many aspects of GitHub Actions. I particularly recommend the Hello World and Continuous Integration ones if you just want to get familiar. And then other GitHub data app, GitHub Action data resources you might want to check out is this blog and repository from the person who actually kind of inspired me to make this talk in the first place. He has a little project where you can actually deploy and train a machine learning model on the code on uh, using entirely through GitHub Actions. It's a small model, but you can still use it and you don't have to have any sort of powerful computer to get it started. You just need to write up the YAML files and GitHub Actions will kind of handle the rest. And I also highly recommend looking into the debugging action, which is the action teammate, because if you do any amount of coding, you're eventually going to need to learn how to debug. Uh, so if you're wondering how do you debug something that gets automatically triggered on somebody else's server, this is the GitHub action you're going to want to look at. So with that, I'll let you all uh, go off on your separate ways, and hopefully you will find GitHub actions useful. Thank you all for having me today. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to present to you.